Good evening. Please be seated. Welcome all members to the full council meeting of the 25th of January. I'd like to remind all members to please use their microphones and speak clearly when addressing the chamber. The meeting will be live streamed and uploaded on the council website. I would now like to ask Reverend Canon Darren Barlow to lead us in prayer. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Friday is International Holocaust Memorial Day. Thurrock, like many communities across the UK and around the world, usually marks this important event with a gathering led by the Mayor in the Remembrance Gardens in Greys. We will be meeting to make a public statement of commitment which will involve leaders of the community, faith groups and, very importantly, local schools. The 27th of January is the day for the world to remember the six million Jews murdered in the Holocaust and others killed by Nazi persecution. And of course, in subsequent genocides in Cambodia, Rwanda, Darfur and Bosnia. This Friday, the 27th of January, marks the day 78 years ago when the liberation of Auschwitz-Birkenau, the largest Nazi death camp, took place. Holocaust Memorial Day is a time when we seek to learn the lessons of the past and to recognise that genocide does not just take place on its own. It's a steady process which can begin if discrimination, racism and hatred are not checked prevented and challenged. As leaders of this community, everyone here this evening has a role to play. A role to play in standing up against discrimination and challenging the use of language which encourages or legitimizes hatred, division or exclusion. I really do hope if you're free on Friday morning that you will join me at 11 a.m. for this very important annual event. I want to read a short uh, text which was written by one of the victims of the Nazis. First they came for the communists and I did not speak out because I was not a communist. Then they came for the socialists and I did not speak out because I was not a socialist. Then they came for the trade unionists and I did not speak out because I was not a trade unionist. Then they came for the Jews and I didn't speak out because I was not a Jew. Then they came for me, and there was no one left to speak out for me. So the prayer accredited to St. Francis of Assisi. Let's pray. Lord, us, Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is discord, union. Where there is doubt, sow faith. Where despair and darkness sow hope and light. Where there is sadness sow joy. For your mercy and your truth's sake we pray. Amen. Thank you very much, Reverend Barlow. Item one, apologies for absence. I've received apologies from Councillor Rigby, Councillor Baker, Councillor Churchman, Councillor Fish and Councillor Hebb. Are there any further apologies? Councillor Burnt? Councillor Smith. Councillor Carter. Councillor Anaji. Minutes item two. I move that the minutes of the council meeting 30th of November be approved as a correct record. Is it seconded? Thank you, leader. All in agreement? Yeah. I move that the meeting of the, the minutes of the extraordinary meeting of 9th of January 2023 be approved as a correct record. Is that seconded? Thank you, leader. All in agreement? Thank you very much. Item three, items of urgent business. I'm not agreed to the consideration of any urgent items. Item four, declarations of interest. Does anyone have a, a declaration of interest they wish to declare? No, thank you. Item five, before we proceed with announcements, I'll read the fallen war dead from World War II from December 1942. Joseph Hampstead, Dennis Crawford, James Flanagan, John Parker, Sidney Carter, Leslie Giles, Cecil Davey, Leslie Bowles, Austin Boxall, George Wilkes.
and from January 1943, Roy Thurston, Peter Newman, John Pettit, Leslie Manning, and Matthew Sharpley. May they rest in peace. Announcements on behalf of the Mayor. Uh, following draft directions uh, between the Secretary of State and our Commissioners, the Acting Chief Executive Ian Wake will return to his former post as Director of Adults Health and Housing when the new Managing Director is appointed. I know I echo the sentiments of the Leader when I say we could not have made it this far through the recovery process if it wasn't for Ian. The quality of advice from certain officers has fallen into disrepute in recent times. However, I can say when I was a cabinet member myself, the advice I received from Ian was always utterly exemplary. He always welcomed challenge, even if it resulted in the phone being put down on the other occasionally. And he was always an outstanding advocate, both in private and in public. I believe that Ian has an incredibly bright future, and as long as he's involved still in Thurrock, the borough will have a bright future. I would like to remind members that they are still welcome to nominate people for the Mayor's Roll of Honour. It was my joy to have the Perfect Heritage Centre and Stanford Blooming Marvels in the parlour this month to receive their honours. Tonight the Leader will make a statement regarding government directions and given the seriousness of the situation, I will allow the Leader of the Opposition a brief reply. Finally, I wish to give the Chamber a moment for a minute's silence following the sad passing of Merlin Jones last year. Our 32nd Mayor was a truly wonderful man. I was very proud to welcome him to the parlour with his wife early last year for the Armed Service Day event and welcome them back when Mrs Jones received the Mayor's Role of Honour for her role in promoting the borough as our first female Mayor and our Charter Mayor. Merlin was also a Deputy Lieutenant, and during the period in which I knew him, even though his voice was shaky and he was infirm on his feet, his love and his passion for public service most certainly was not diminished. I understand the funeral will be taking place on Monday the 6th of February at 2.40 at Corbett's Tay. And in honour of our former Mayor, I would like to ask all members to stand for a minute's silence. Thank you very much. Council Cockshaw, as Leader of the Council, would you like to make your Leader's announcements? Thank you, Mr Mayor. And as, as I'm sure you know, public speaking is not my forte, so bear with me, but I think this needs to be a long statement and, um, and I'll try and keep it as accurate as what I've written down as possible. Um, this week, it's been very clear that all 49 of us need to really look at ourselves and ask whether we've done enough. We, at the Minister's presentation and written statement, the accompanying letters of the Commissioner have given us a taste of the best value to come. I can, um, we now have 10 days to make our representations. I can say today I have requested General Services Committee to meet and discuss our response if needed. And as Chair, all members will be welcome and welcome to speak. Please remember, though, that this is a look-back exercise, and it's not previously mentioned work, and it does not mention the work that we have done since the 2nd of December. For me, the one of the most important quotes in the statement is, it is important to make clear the council finances difficulties are a consequence of dysfunction within the council and not the cause of it. What well, the point of this is, is poor culture and synthetic 
strengths and weaknesses in the council, not just in, not just the governing party at the time. It has to. It also says a lack of const consistent strategic direction over many years, inadequate governance arrangements, and weakness of internal controls. Those issues must be addressed by all 49 of us. The decisions taken by this council are ones which are done in the name of all 49 of us. The process of record keeping, audit trail and accountability was absent here in Thurrock. This is why I have put so much emphasis on transparency. Sunlight is the best disinfectant. And I think you've heard that over many years that I've been here say that. I must say, it's also important, the strategic weakness of Thurrock, is it too small to be a unitary authority? It is a weakness stems from the successive minority administrations over 13 years. It also has mechanical and, and accountability and scrutiny issues, which have not come in the last two years is from time and memorial, as long as I've been here. I'm horrified to learn in the report that the accountability structures do not appear to be lawful and lack a sc statutory scrutiny officer it is our legal officers that ensure our procedures are compliant and where that has been lacking. The, there is a whole situation of weaknesses created, created this solution. These are cultural issues beyond party colours and of any administration. And it's up to all of us to work collectively to tackle these. The Commissioner's document fails political and management leadership, challenging, dis dismissing and ignoring the norms of checks and balances was we're not operating, <laughs> leading to a statement of incompetence. The terms of how the financial management took place and decisions were made in the name of the council without proper oversight of members. At the time of the council meetings, the, of the council meetings, and the members opposite were referred to a few times, there was clear instructions from that meeting that borrowing should be scaled back. It was not until the government forced the intervention that this can appear that it didn't happen. We still need to establish how that was able to take place in the absence of instructions of this council. There is observations that which I totally concur with. Members are not served well by producing paperwork and agendas, enabling scrutiny to, in, to in, enable scrutiny to make informed decisions. Members are not an inconvenience to be managed. Members are here to protect the interests of residents. When we're treated poorly, the people of Thurrock are treated poorly. There needs to be a sea change in the way which members and officers work together. Commissioners illustrate just why the financial conversation took place is such a shock. As it states in the council has agreed the set of principles which should be acted upon as a framework for the investment programme. But there was no audit, no reporting and delegated authorities were allowed. This allowed the borrowing to increase and not to be scaled back which we all believed. What needs to happen now is for all of us to focus on the future and address the synthetic weaknesses that have been identified here. It is wrong, and now it's very clear that our assurances were, the assurances were given to us all are was given wrongly. This, since this catastrophe it has materialised, I have dedicated every waking hour to try and put this right. That is how I see my duties as a public servant. I think it's what the residents of us, the residents of Thurrock expect, and that's what I would be doing. We can rehearse the same partisan lines every month, and we can collectively work, or we can collectively work and fix this. Opposition now have their chance at the ballot box to actually throw us all out or not change, the electorate can change us. In the meantime, I will do my best for residents of Thurrock. The, the way of politics has played out in this chamber was a factor that we can change that we had three parties in the administration right the way through for most of the 13 years that I've been elected here. We've had, uh, th this has led to difficult decisions regarding tax and spend being ducked. And this is the reason why the borrowing to invest began in the first place, endorsed by all members in this chamber. As a failure to, deli also as failure to deliver projects, everyone understands that members make decisions, officers implement decisions and deliver them. People if people know me well, that I could give enough challenge, and I've given challenge over many years, but some of that challenge was, was hitting a brick wall. This report indicates insufficient capacity to deliver major projects, which I would concur with that. 
as major projects, management structures showed the utter dysfunction in the, in of the reports. But by way of transparent illustration, the utter embarrassment to me personally of how the town hall was handled, the attempts to cover up with mismanagement was utterly insulting. We are basically asked to see, to not see, unsee what we've seen ourselves. I think Councillor Warrow and I were in the same building when we walked in here. And it convinced no one and damaged the reputation of the council. This is why under my leadership we're going open and transparency. And I hope members will see that I have delivered on my promises when I become leader, including fronting up the hard knocks and when they come to me. And I will continue to do this. Thank you, Leader. Leader of the Opposition. Mr Mayor, the scope of the uh, new, new uh, in interventions, the, the further directions to, to Thurrock are really pr pretty shocking. So all functions associated with the governance, scrutiny and transparency of strategic decision making by the authority to ensure compliance with the best value of duty, including oversight of audit of the authority's governance. Uh, all functions associated with the authority's operating model and redesign of council services to achieve value for money and financial sustainability. The appointment, suspension and dismissal of staff in the top three tiers of the organisation, including powers to determine the process for making these appointments and dismissals and to design a new officer structure. The development, oversight and operation of an effective performance management framework for senior officers. And of course, additionally, to appoint a commissioner to act as the managing director of the authority. You, you, you read that and, and then you kind of cross-reference it with the best value inspector's interim report and you, you can see why government believes that it has no option but to deeper that intervention in Thurrock and to do it immediately. Not to do it at the end of the process, not to do it once the best value inspection report has been published, but they feel the need to, to actually make that change now to try and get some capacity uh, into the organisation. And as the leader said, you know, we could stand here and, and read, read quotes from, from this all, all night, but there are a few that are really uh, telling. The, the leader's already said one. The financial difficulties are the consequence of dysfunction within the council and not the cause of it. And we've seen that across so many services. We see it in the refuse service where we can't get the bins emptied. As the leader said, we've seen it in major project, projects where Stamford Railway Station still not rebuilt. The A13 uh, widening over budget and what was it, three years uh, late. We've seen it with the building of this, of this building. Uh, so it runs right through the authority. The effective running of the, of the council and its ability to deliver on its ambitions have been undermined by a failure in political and managerial leadership. A lack of transparency with members, which is shocking, but not surprising. It's something that we have been talking about for years, but nobody would listen to us. A culture of insularity and complacency within which transparency of decision making the operation of the normal and proper checks and balances have been eroded, internal challenge has been discouraged, external criticism has been routinely dismissed, placing the council in a state of unconscious incompetence. And I think that line sums, sums up where we are with the authority, a state of unconscious incompetence. I have to say that, that our view hasn't changed. We will do everything we can to work together to turn Thurrock ground. We do that because we live here, we care about the place, we're invested in the place, and we want the best for the future of the borough for, for all of our residents. But I have to say that this evening, when we look forward and see that budgets uh, can't be balanced for the next six years, and after that six years, the situation starts to get worse. Uh, I don't know what the future is for Thurrock. All I do know is that I am incredibly concerned about it. Uh, we have to come together and try to do what we can to salvage what is salvageable. Leader of the Council. I, I'd just say thank you, Councillor Kent, for the offer. Thank you. Thank you. Questions from members of the public. One question has been submitted and accepted by the monitoring officer. I'd ask for the benefit of the recording that the questioner read out their question, please. Uh, uh, Mr. Perrin, if you'd like to remain seated, you're more than welcome to. Uh, Mr. Perrin, would you please read out your question to the Cabinet Member for Housing? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. 
I'm not sure which councillor I'm addressing. Councillor Spillman. Councillor Spillman. Good evening, Councillor Spillman. Are you confident that tenants in council housing are safe from hazards to their health and well-being, particularly with regard to damp and mould, which I believe is a category one hazard? Councillor for housing, would you like to respond? I'm always very concerned about damp and mould. It's something that I deal with regularly in my day job, and it's one of the main focuses that we've put over the last year and a half since I've been cabinet member. Um, there's different reasons for new concern about damp and mould, and that's the cost of living crisis, which has created another problem, whereby a lot of people are finding it very difficult to heat their homes, which is a real dangerous thing when it comes to damp and mould. That's why we've put in extra funding to try and help support people in that situation. We're also doing more monitoring regarding damp and mould than this council's ever done at any time in its history. We've got a task force set up with not just our internal stakeholders, but we've set a task force up borough-wide with all the different housing providers and care providers in Thurrock so that it's not just a case of tackling damp and mould in social housing, but it's also about protecting tenants in all housing in Thurrock. So it's not just about council tenants that we're focusing this, um, this process on. It's about making sure that all tenants in Thurrock are being protected from the harm that damp and mould can cause. Now, there's lots of different causes of damp and mould, so it's all about putting the proper structural, um, if there's structural issues, fixing those structural issues. If there are, if the main cause is condensate, condensation, making sure that we do our bit to make sure rooms are properly ventilated, to make sure there's vents, um, extractor fans, and uh, mechanical dehumidifiers where, where's, where is required. But it's also about education as well, because a, a lot of people don't know how they can reduce condensate in their own homes. So it's about going in and helping people reduce condensation in their own homes. So it's a complete package of financial repairs, education, and, um, and reporting. So we're looking for more of it. We're doing more to try and stop it in the first place. We're doing more to try and fix it where it happens. And we're doing more to educate tenants so that they can try and avoid it being a recurrence. So I think really, we are, in terms of the report that's come out, we are actually ahead of the curve when it comes to local authorities in dealing with the, uh, the new regulatory framework that's come out of the terrible, terrible death of uh, that child in 2020. Thank you, Councillor Spillman. Mr Perrin, would you like to pose a supplementary question? Thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, thank you, Councillor Spillman. Um, the death of our Ishak, who died in 2020, eight days after his second birthday, as a direct result of black mould in the flat he lived in, should dispel any lingering doubts that black mould is a Category 1 hazard, dangerous, life-threatening, especially to babies and young children. A coroner has said the death of an engaging, lively, endearing two-year-old from prolonged exposure to mould in his family's flat should be a defining moment for the UK's housing sector. England's housing ombudsman said landlords must make plans to tackle the real risk of worsening damp and mould issues. In view of expected expenditure restrictions, imposed as a result of the financial crisis, can you give an assurance that the treatment and control of damp and mould, particularly black mould, will be exempt from financial cutbacks, be a number one priority, and residents are not subjected to prolonged exposure to black mould and that their children will be safe in their home? I take this opportunity to remind councillors that 10 or more years ago, 
Mrs. Deirdre Lodge, her late husband, Simon, and myself pleaded with the council to take the issue of black mould in council houses seriously and recognise it as a life-threatening hazard, only to be dismissed as scaremongers. I believe, at the very least, Mrs. Lodge is owed an apology from the council. Thank you. Councillor Spillman. Uh, I know Deirdre fairly well, um, and I uh, was also campaigning on the subject of mould, damp and mould throughout that period. Um, I was also told on many occasions that my concerns were unfounded, and I believe wholeheartedly that damp and mould are serious health implications and can kill people. Now, not only did, I think it's worth going back to what happened to AWAB, because I think it's important that people hear this. Um, this is what the, the coroner and the doctor said. They said that his throat, windpipe and other airways were so swollen and congested that breathing would have been made difficult. Fungus was found in his blood and lungs with such severe inflammation suggesting an allergic reaction to it. And I'm really pleased that this judgment came. It's just a shame that it came as a result of this poor child dying because it was a long time coming and it's created a legislative change and forced councils, landlords across the board to face up to the effects of damp and mould. And I, I see that as nothing but a positive. Regarding funding, I must remind you that the HRA is ring-fenced from the general fund and that we've had conversations with commissioners and, there is n and they have, have, they've said to us that there's no problems with us continuing to invest in our housing stock. And, um, and so I'm really pleased with that. And that's not just regarding repairs, capital projects, but also with new builds as well. So it's very welcome news. So you, you need to separate the HRA from the uh, general fund. To in, in simple terms, it's like two different companies within the same umbrella. Um, so no, there'll be no cuts as a result of, um, as a result of uh, the financial problems. But I also hope, and I say this regarding cuts to opposition members, that they will not be playing politics with rent increases and service charges this year because if anything is going to result in cuts that could result in our tenants being harmed, it's going to be playing politics with rent and service increases and ending up with the 2.6... Well, that's not what was said at committee. Yeah, that was not what was said at committee. So I really hope that they'll support the rent and service charge increases because we'll be able to protect tenants. If It's not about masks, it's about... It's about playing politics with cuts, yeah? And I want to protect this council but from 2.6 million Spillman, pounds of cuts, which you're Councillor Spillman, thank you. Item 7, petitions from members of the public and councillors. No, from the one, so the public. In line with the council constitution, one petition has been received. Councillor Kelly, would you please present your petition? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I present this petition of 544 signatures for the creation of a new community wetlands on the old Ball Meadow nursery site to help naturally manage flooding, with flooding currently being a regular occurrence on Dock Road, Little Thurrock, along with nearby sluice gates getting overwhelmed. Uh, the petition also asks uh, the rest of the site be cleared and improved to make the area an open, accessible space. Uh, both Councillor Gledhill and I have discussed this at length with officers with the added benefit to protect the site from developers, uh, improve access to the site for residents and improve the biodiversity of the area which will help eradicate this prob uh, problem of flooding in an environmentally friendly way. Uh, the petition calls on the council to move forward with the project, which is around about 12 months old, uh, with officers, um, as they've submitted a bid for funding from the Environment Agency. So uh, their initial research will be funded uh, by them if that bid's successful, which we're quite confident it will be. And uh, providing that study is successful, uh, we can use uh, and can fund the project through uh, Section 106 money, which, is, uh, which remains dormant in that area. So it, sh it should all uh, 
be relatively easy to fund. Uh, I'd like to thank the officers who have worked on the project so far and the residents from across Little Farrock, Farrock Park and surrounding areas who took time to sign this petition and for the offers of help with uh, construction of the site given recent success uh, from volunteers on a new community garden uh, next door to this area which uh, you kindly visited a few months ago and, and, and thanked all those uh, involved in that project. So thank you very much and uh, yeah, I look forward to it. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Kelly. Cabinet Member for Environment, would you like to respond? Thank you, Mr Mayor. And thank you, Councillor Kelly, for your petition. I know that both you and Councillor Gledhill have been campaigning for this for some time, urged on by your residents who are thoroughly committed to this project. Indeed, I know they're willing to roll up their sleeves and to get stuck in. We will seriously look at this petition and let me reassure him, let me reassure him and residents that as portfolio holder, I'm committed to seeing measures taken to protect us from flooding and to open up our, all our green spaces to all our residents. Thank you, Councillor Jeffries. Um, item eight, update report in respect to petitions presented at the council. Any members wish to comment? Nope. Item nine, appointments, committees, outside bodies, statutory and other panels. Leader of the council, do you have any changes you wish to make for the conservative group? Yes, I'd like to have uh, one uh, addition, that's Councillor Graham Snell to the Essex Pension Board. Thank you. Leader of the opposition, Labour group changes? No, Councillor Byrne, independent changes? Councillor Massey? No, thank you. Councillor Allen? No changes, Mr Mayor. Thank you. <laughs> item 10 has been withdrawn. We move to item 11, corporate parenting annual report. Councillor Paul Arnold, would you please introduce the report? Thank you, Mr Mayor. As the current chair of the corporate parenting committee, it gives me great pleasure to introduce the annual report on behalf of the committee for 2021-2022. I would like to take the opportunity to thank Councillor Jenny Smith for taking the time to produce this report with officers. And thanks also to all other councillors who sat on that committee during that year. As I'm sure all members are aware, we are all corporate parents. This means as councillors, we, we all have a lead role in ensuring that the council acts as an effective corporate parent for every child in care by actively seeking high quality outcomes that 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 every good parent would want for their child. Within the report, it highlights the committee were kept well informed as to the initial health assessments. As Chair 2, I have recently given more focus to the lateness of initial health assessments for our looked after children. When it is a statutory requirement to provide each child with a health check within 21 days, it is unacceptable that the process is, in some instances, taking double that amount of time. I am pleased to report that our health partners have recognised this and are increasing resources to get them back on track, and officers will continue to support health partners in achieving better outcomes going forward. Members also received an annual report from the Children in Care Council, which highlighted the work and support members of the Children in Care Council received over the last year, especially during the pandemic. The committee and officers continue to work for the best of our, look, for the best of our looked after children and look forward to continuing the hard work in the future. Going forward, to widen my own appreciation of the service and gain understanding, I've taken the opportunity to visit several different areas. Among them, I spent time in the Mashroom, the Child and Family Assessment Team, the Outer Court Disposal Panel, the Youth Offending Service, Tilby Children's Centre, the Adoption and Fostering Panel, and the Think Family Service at the Oak Tree Resource Centre. And to finish, Mr Mayor, I would like to encourage all members to take the time and do the same, as we are all corporate parents. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Arnold. Would any other member wish to speak on the report? No, Councillor Arnold, would you wish to sum up? No, that's fine, Mr Mayor. Thank you. All members in agreement with the recommendation on page 55? Yes. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Thank you. <coughs> Item 12, annual pay policy statements. Cabinet Member Finance, would you please introduce the report? 
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, this report details the 22-23 pay policy statement. Uh, the Council agreed a pay policy for 22-23 in February last year, which recommended pay increases between 2.25 and 2.5 per cent. However, after the conclusion of national negotiations for local government pay, we have agreed to adopt the NJC award of an increase of £1,925 on all pay points, which is a greater increase than that which we agreed in Council last year. Um, this award will be implemented in year and backdated to April 2022. Um, this has been through General Services uh, and the committee, uh, General Services Committee and the recommendations to commend the NJC award was agreed unanimously. This is, this is good news for the staff at the Council. Uh, it's been a tough couple of years for everybody, um, but the, the Council workers have been fantastic throughout it all and are entirely blameless with the, the issues that the Council is now um, facing. So this is, this is good news uh, and they're going to get some reward for their, all their hard work. Uh, going forward, we've agreed to a request by the Commissioner to conduct a full review of payment arrangements and uh, policies to ensure all opportunities for mitigating the pay growth are considered. Um, we haven't had a review for some time, so this is long overdue. Um, so with that, I shall um, open for questions. Thank you, Councillor Snell. Does any member wish to speak on the report? Councillor Collins. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I'd just like to uh, add my congratulations and appreciation uh, for a very good report and a very good result for all the uh, members of staff at Starrett Council. They are indeed very hard working and they thoroughly deserve this raise. And uh, having been uh, given the task of reviewing paying them and, uh, and income uh, for people in uh, the Council before, uh, I know it can be a very tough and thankless task. Uh, and well done. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Collins. Councillor Mays. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, I just want to say I fully support this. I think uh, it's easy to think it's a pay rise when actually it's a cost of living rise. It's keeping people in line with the current situation. So um, the fact that it is costing 2.758 million, we have to be mindful of because it isn't budgeted, but we have to do it and we have to support it. So definitely uh, that's a, got to be in our mind for the future. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Mays. Any other contributions? Leader of the Council. I think I, it was in uh, Chair General Services. I was very pleased to bring this here. I'm very pleased it was, it was adopted unanimously. I, what I do say, it, was, it, was, it's, it is unfunded in last year's budget. It's not in the budget, and um, it's good it should happen for the obvious reasons my cabinet colleague mentioned. But that, that's, uh, that, that, that this mean next month we're moving into budgets setting, and that's something like the, these people. Budget setting is not about us wasting money here in this room. It's about the staff as well. We've got to think, and that, that actually we, as 49 of us, I believe next month when we come to the budget setting, this is near this 3% of council tax to pay for this. So let's just think about that as we come through our process through INS in the next month, looking at this and how we want to make sure we reward our staff properly. The money's not just cuts, 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 and we've got to think about how we actually fund this and budget this as we go to budget setting. It's an important thing to think about that things like this we can do and we can't like we want to do and uh, I want to carry on doing these but that does need to say we've got to set a good budget and make sure government especially with the extraordinary health support will come forward as hopefully in the next month and through as we go through ONS we look at budgets and look at council tax as it comes through to your areas committees and your groups please think sensibly and look at th through that and come back with some good ideas thank you thank you leader Councillor Snell, would you like to sum up? No, I think I'll leave it there, Mr. Mayor. I agree with uh, the comments made and uh, move to the recommendations. Thank you. Recommendations 1.1, 1.2, 1.3 are outlined on page 68. Members in agreement? Any opposed? Any abstentions? Thank you. Item 13, Local Council Tax Support Scheme. Can the Cabinet Member for Finance please introduce the report? Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, this is the uh, Local Council Tax Support Scheme. Uh, this is it's one of the, the, the good things we do for the residents of Thurrock that are sort of struggling with their, their council tax payments. This is basically to announce the continuation of the scheme that we agreed in April 2017. 
and we'll be renewing it for another year for 2022-23. Um, um, we will be doing the same as with the last report, a review going forward. Um, but for now, it's good news for the residents that uh, the support is going to be maintained at the level it has been for the past few years. Thank you, Councillor Snell. Any member wish to speak? Councillor Snell, would you like to sum up? Uh, just to recommend that it's a, it's a good news for the residents of Farrock and move to the recommendations, please. Members in agreement? Any opposed? Any abstentions? Thank you. Item 14, questions from members. Leader of the Opposition, would you like to put your question to the Leader of the Council? Does the Leader intend asking Government to postpone or to cancel May's local elections here in Thurrock? Leader of the Council? No, the democratic process should happen. Yeah. Leader of the Opposition? I'm glad to hear that and I think we all agree. Would the Leader welcome a boundary view that would lead to uh, all our elections uh, next year or the year after? Leader of the Council? Um, I think there's a boundary review due. We've been since 2002. We need a boundary review. Uh, there, that, is a, that is a definitely of use. I think we need to have a conversation as all of us to when the boundary review could happen. Um, it's not due to in 2024. That's a, that's a conversation we really do need, whether a boundary review should happen. Um, I think, personally, about the democratic process, that should be part of our review of any constitution, what we do through here on all 49. It shouldn't be just me or the Cabinet or 30 of us outside. I want to engage in 49 about what look like democracy looks like in Thurrock. And I think a boundary review, and I think there's, a, there's other opportunities to look at what democracy and how we elect people in Thurrock. Leader the Opposition. I think the opportunity for the whole community, for all voters in Thurrock, to have their say and give their opinion on what has happened here is, is really important. So can I encourage uh, the, the Leader of the Council to do all he can uh, to bring that boundary review forward so that we can have that all-out election and we can give people the chance to either re-elect all of us or to replace all of us? Leader of the Council. I agree. Um, that was an opportunity. We can do that. That's a Boundary Commission's decision, um, unless the government decides that we can actually expedite it. But it, uh, the boundary is 2024 is full up at the moment. I think it was looked at two years ago, and we, we couldn't, um, when the Boundary Commission was no interest, and our neighbours will have that next year all out. It would be sensible how to get a boundary and make sure we're electing the right number here, and it take with it so it can be done in under 12 months is a different matter. Question two. Leader of the Opposition. Will the Leader set out his preferred option for local government devolution in Essex? Leader of the Council. I currently have no preferred option for devolution of the Essex area. I can say that leaders have been actively engaging through the Essex Leaders and Chief Executive Group to explore the possibilities of dialogue with government for a devolution deal. Let's be clear what a devolution deal isn't, and I think it's very difficult, it's not a local authority boundary changes. The work on the devolution is to devolve powers from government down to a different, uh, and share services from the top two authorities, which would be Essex, South End, Essex County Council, South End and Thurrock, and, sh and, that they, and we, we would share services with a new body. It's not a, a removing us. The decision has not been taken or made of what, uh, and an, exp uh, an expression of interest will be considered at the next meeting of the Essex leaders and chief executive on the 30th of January, and comments are invited to the proposals well into February. I remind all members across Essex we're invited to share a briefing meeting to this date and work, to, and work ongoing. I will, in, or we'll also invite all chairs of uh, the, the, to come to me, speak to me, and, and the Chair of Overall Corporate Opening and Scrutiny to consider a special meeting for a briefing of the, uh, the Greater Essex deal which has been proposed. But I'd like to remove other options. There is other options out there, which is removing a cellar, which has been around for some time now and really is a level one, and it could go to a level two or level three. But I would give this undertaking that I agree the decision, the decision process for this should be with all leaders and should come to a democratic governance procedure, not just the 30. Leader, Leader of the Opposition. 
Mr. Mayor, I, I understand that the leader has an open mind on this, but the 30th of January is only Monday, so can I suggest that he comes to some sort of uh, conclusion o over the weekend? Mr. Mayor, I think it's really important if Thurrock is to survive uh, as we know it in any shape or form that we fully embrace the devolution agenda to help bring in the extra capacity to deliver some of those infrastructure problems that you know, clearly we have failed to deliver over the years. I really see embracing uh, de devolution, be that combined authorities, uh, a a elected mayors for, for part of the, 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 the county as a, a real opportunity to, to just help us get out of the mess we're in now. Does, does the leader agree with that? I think we've got to, the to, council. I think we've got to devolve the two because obviously I, what I don't want is Thurrock's problems to become my neighbour's problems. And I think that muddies the waters of a devolution deal, which I think there is advantages for a devolution deal. I think like the madness of um, skills agenda being decided by Thurrock Great Council, Can Essex County Council and South End is, is crazy. I think the madness that the A13 and the 127, we have to individually bid for it and a small authority like this, when we can't, it gets now up to the five bells, it still changes. We can have good deals and good deals for the devolution deals can actually get us good strategic road networks. I think the ideas around health and how we can make sure, there's great ideas how we can share and get devolution and there's a lot of money on the, on the table per capita. If you look at some of the deals that have been done now by this government and I can see uh, the, council, the, the Labour opposition's um, proposals, the Gordon Brown proposals are very exciting. So I think members must realise whatever, it's not this government, it, both governments, both the, head, both the leaders of government, whoever it's going to be in, in two years' time, are agreed devolution is the way to go and we can't put our head in the sand and say no to it. We've got to move forward, but it's got to be the right decision for Thurrock and the Thurrock people. And I think um, do, you're, you're leading to a boundary changes and what can we do in boundaries? I think we can have a conversation about that, but at this time, this is all about a new tier of government. And, it's, and that's what worries people, because that would be another back tax on the council tax powers, if they're a, a fee for something. And I don't want to do that without good conversations. As you say, the 30th is a day we see, all the, see the proposals for Greater Essex. I've just suggested that there's some other alternative proposals, and they may need to be there. We've got until the end of March, to put something to the Secretary of State. We may not have a settled opinion with 15 uh, leaders by that time, but we'll have something to open negotiations into the rest of the year. So we won't have to make a decision on the 30th. But because again, just because we've just been talking about 49 of us, I don't want to make a decision here and just with my cabinet. It's got to be us and lead through. And I welcome jo uh, Councillor Kent's options there to put a few of them but get them out there so we can all get involved in this and if you haven't had a leaders been involved in any meetings at the moment members please come to me and, and I think we can send out all the slides that are freely available and feed back to me what you want me to say in the next three months because I will be lead, led by 49 members not just the cabinet or me so my own preferred choice. Leader of Opposition. I, I agree with m much of that. The, the devolution agenda has been about since at least 2006, 2007. I remember David Miliband talking about double devolution, as he called it. Uh, we would devolve powers down to local government. They need to devolve powers th down to people. Uh, I'm disappointed in many ways that, that more hasn't been delivered. I'm going to take the leader's uh, point about we don't want to contaminate our neighbours with Thurrock's toxic debt. I think, I think we all accept that. C can I just ask the leader, when he sees uh, the proposals for devolution in Greater Essex, what are the key tests and principles that he will use to judge which is best? I, I base it on one, the major principle of the legislative levelling up white paper was an economic area, a functioning economic area actually. And I've got to the, the, the economic test is, is Greater Essex, which is South End County, Essex County Council and us, a functioning economic area. When we do have at the moment a functioning economic area, the seller. But I see the advantages of a Greater Essex deal because the government likes county deals, like one county moving forward. But there is, a, so there's options not to discount that deal and it's an interesting option with the, fam, the, the size of the fund available. But I think we just need to make sure that we thoroughly kick the tires on all options and how we kick them tires is what I want help with. Thank you. We'll move on to questions to cabinet members. 
Uh, question one, Councillor Byrne, would you please put your question to the Camp Member for Health? Yeah, Mr Mayor, Councillor Arnold. Can you confirm the project managers, drivers and decision makers for Thorot Indi Integrated Medical Centres are the NHS and not Thorot Conservatives, please? Councillor Arnold. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Burns, as always, for your question. Um, I'm going to split it out into three areas because your, que your question relates to. So, drivers, it depends what you mean by drivers. Drivers for the programme are managed through the business case process set out by NHS England for major capital projects. The dictionary says that a driver is a wheel or a part in a mechanism that transmits motion to other parts. So I would argue that I'm a driver, as are my fellow councillors and those sitting on HOSC and challenging. And um, that as councillors, we're here because we're wanting to drive and make improvements to health outcomes and services to our residents a priority and pushing the agenda as much as we can. Project management is controlled and managed by the integrated care system, supported by staff members from across partner organisations and local authorities. And the final decision to proceed <coughs> sits with NHS England for approval of outline and final business cases. And Councillor Arnold, Councillor Byrne, supplementary? Yes, because so this, this, this is where I get confused, because it seems anything negative centres around the NHS. So, but so at what point did a Conservative jettison the NHS and claim it as a personal council of success? Councillor Arnold, would you like to respond? Yes, yeah, strange question. Uh, difficult to answer. I don't think we've claimed that we're the success of, uh, that for Corinne and my MC. This is a partnership. It's the integrated care system. It's an alliance. It's local authority. It's the directors, it's staff, it's officers, it's frontline workers, it's the NHS, it's councillors. We all have our part to play in this. Nobody's taking personal credit for anything. Councillor Byrne, supplementary. Yes, well a recent leaflet delivered to 3,500 hounds in the set ward says, this is why councillor Christian name and surname has done recently. He has opened a new medical centre taking full credit with a full Kodak amendment printed on the leaflet. So does, and it's here, on his leaflet, three and a half thousand people with a Kodak moment saying, it's me. So it's somebody's taking the credit. And it's, are you objection the NHS? You were invited to... You told to it to three and a half thousand people. <laughs> Councillor Byrne, can you turn off your microphone, yeah, please? You. Yeah. Councillor Arnold. Nobody took personal credit. We were at the opening... We, there's a photograph, I put a letter, a newsletter out to Corringham and Fobbing showing them that the medical centre is there. There are some people that don't realise that that medical centre is open. It's a newsletter to tell people it's open. Nobody's taking credit. Uh, yeah, Burns, and, you've and had your thank question. you Councillor Burns for reading it. <laughs> <laughs> and and, and Councillor Burns, you, you don't... I'm really glad that I put that out for you to see it because you, I'm really glad you've seen it and read it because you don't attend HOSC, you don't attend health and wellbeing, you don't attend cabinet meetings, you don't attend ICB, you don't attend the MSEE partnership updates. So I can't call you a driver, the only thing I think you're driving is your car here. Question two, Councillor Pearce. So no, 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 no Councillor Burton, no. She can have her, sorry, what can I find? She jumped no. in again. No. Councillor Burton, that's how it works. The Cabinet Member answers the final question. So the Cabinet Member, it light flies. Question two, Councillor Pearce, would you please put your question to the Cabinet Member for Environment? Thank you, Mr Mayor. Dog fouling in children's play areas in Avely, namely Martin Road, Kennington's Park, Avely Recreation Ground, and Perfleet Playground, serving uplands and Watts Wood, appear to be getting worse and is a concern for many of my constituents. Please would you inform me whether the council has considered any further potential measures aiming at tackling this? Thank you. Councillor Jeffers, would you respond please? Thank you, Mr Mayor. And thank you, Councillor Pearce, for your question. 
Via this administration's Clinic Cut It Fill It programme, we have sought to enhance our public areas by tackling forms of antisocial behaviour. And I agree that dog fouling is no less of a nuisance, and it is right that the Council considers ways to tackle this. I can confirm that over the last five or so years, we've replaced all the old metal dog bins with dual purpose bins, which we now have nearly 600 dual bins, including the 40 large dual purpose ones in our town centre bins. In the terms of enforcement, this is something which my colleague, Councillor Mainy, will be able to discuss with you more in detail. However, I know that the Council has sought to tackle dog fouling in our local cemeteries by the introduction of public space protection orders, and I look forward to seeing them in place soon. PSP, PSPSOs will allow our enforcement officers to issue fixed penalty notices to people who allow their dogs to foul or who disobey the requirements to keep them on a lead. I know that the consideration has been given to whether PSPOs could also be introduced in our play areas, and there are a number of considerations which must be made before this can happen, and there are requirements to demonstrate the evidence that a problem exists. I would therefore urge all councillors and residents to report dog fouling to the council for this reason. Lastly, I understand that our environmental enforcement officers will start making increased patrols of our parks and open spaces in the hope that their presence will deter some instances of dog fouling. This will also enable the council to assess whether the need for further action is required. Thank you, Councillor Jeffries. Councillor Pearce, would you like a supplementary? Well, it was just to say that, can, uh, how do you advise residents to report these problems associated with dog fouling, given it appears that the next steps by the council are dependent on there being sufficient evidence? Councillor Jeffries. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Pearce, for your uh, supplementary question. I think my, my, my last um, um, words uh, slightly answered this, and that is I'd encourage all residents to report dog fouling um, um, to the council through the um, website so that it can be investigated. And hopefully with more enforcement officers out on patrols in our parks, our open spaces and our cemeteries, we'll be able to deter this. Councillor Pearce, final supplementary? No, thank you. Thank you. Question three. Uh, Councillor Byrne, would you please put your question to the Cabinet Member for Communities? Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, can, the portfolio, can the portfolio I would have confirmed the bidders for the Thameside Theatre, please? Councillor Bass, would you please respond? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor, and thank you, Councillor, for your question. The bidding process for lease of Thameside complex is overseen by a different portfolio. The relevant director has provided me the bidders' names. The bidders who have submitted proposals to take a lease of the same site complex are a partnership between Sarak Lifestyle Solutions and Sarak International Celebration of Culture and Waltham International College. Thank you, Councillor Bass. Councillor Byrne, would you like a supplementary? Yes, please. Well, with the portfolio of interest of the college, cu coupled with a very serious investigation going into Waltham College, a damning report from Ofsted, issues raised with the Liverpool City Region, the Education and Skilled Agency. Learners have never heard of Waltham College. There are inspectors from the GLA in at WIC. The most alarming report is learners and apprentices have, leaders haven't put a secure understanding of the dangers of radicalisation and extreme, extremism. Surely we don't want any more stains on Farrock's credibility. Have we again failed on due diligence? If the evidence is correct, will we eliminate w WIC from coming anywhere near Farrock, please? Thank you, Councillor Byrne. Councillor Bass, would you respond, please? Uh, uh, thank you, Mr Mayor, and thank you for your supplementary question. Uh, my register of interest is very transparent and updated regularly. Because of my education, experience in different fields, and my position, different national and international organizations approach me. So I have been a member in the past, a board of governors of Waltham International College. Likewise, I have been a member of board of governor of Farrakh Adult Community College. In the past, I have been three times appointed vice chair and twice chair of International Human Rights Committee of Lahore. High Court Bar Association, which is one of Asia's largest lawyers association. I was also appointed member of Overseas Advisory Council for UK by the government of Punjab. 
two higher education colleges in London, they have also requested me to become part of their Board of Governors. I think you have a member of Board of Governors is something different. I have no role in their administrative or what the college does. I have resigned their post and I'm not, I don't have any executive powers to make any decisions. Neither assets are under my portfolio. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Bass. Councillor Byrne, a second supplementary. Well, the question was, if that damning report, would they throw out somebody who's like radicalising college pedagogists? That was the question. But anyway, they got no interest, but the Christmas party you enjoyed. And you must have loved everyone there, because there's no faces blanked out. <laughs> um, but so let, sorry, everyone, can everyone let Councillor Byrne um, finish his question? The the question Councillor is, Byrne, Carol. As, as, a as our representative for the community, for its culture, will the portfolio holder be supplied? will be supporting the community by attending the Save the Thameside demo on February 8th, because you are the man that represents <coughs> culture, you are the man that represents community, so you're very welcome, and we've put, we've put you right at the front, if you like. Councillor Bass, would you respond, please? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor, and thank you for your uh, supplementary question. Do I work on rumours? The answer is no. Is theatre open? The answer is yes. Is museum open? The answer is yes. Is the library open? The answer is yes. Thank you, Councillor Bass. Question four, Councillor Kent, would you please put your question to the Cabinet Member for Communities? Will the portfolio holder apply for the Thurrock Museum to become an accredited museum under the Arts Council Museum Accreditation Scheme? Councillor Bass, would you respond? Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and thank you, Councillor, for your question. Yes, I can look into this. Thank you, Councillor Bass. Councillor Kent? Mr. Mayor, that, that is of uh, real, real comfort. Being an, an accredited museum uh, yeah. means that there are certain requirements that have to be fulfilled, such as making sure that uh, artefacts are properly registered, that we have a list of artefacts, uh, it makes it more difficult to sell those artefacts should, for instance, the museum to close. Uh, so can I ask that the portfolio holder undertakes to start that process uh, this week? Councillor Bass? As you have said, there are certain requirements, but I can assure you, like, you no, know, we have digitalized uh, thousands of items which are in our stock. And our plan is to digitalize almost 85% of stock by June 2023. This is not a simple process, but as I said, like, no, we can look into this. Councillor Kent, final supplementary. Mr. Mayor, I'm not really not interested in digitalization of uh, Im images. What I'm interested in is preserving the museum preserving the theater, preserving the library, preserving the whole complex. Will the portfolio holder undertake that when he comes to the, corp uh, the corporate scrutiny committee next week to give us a full update on the progress he's made with achieving accredited status? Councillor Bass, would you respond please? If councillor thinks this is something I can make in one day or two days, I think he's living in an imaginary world. This, there are certain requirements to fulfill. We, we are waiting for a decision on the side complex. There are different requirements. As I said, as soon as those things are overcome, we will certainly look into this. Question five, Councillor Kent, would you please put your question to the Cabinet Member for Growth? Will the portfolio holder set out measures the Council is taking to fulfil its obligations to protect the state cinema? Councillor Cockshaw. The, counts, the council has been in discussion with the owner about the current condition of the building and advised the owner to take steps that consider necessary to secure the land in the short term to protect the building. Unfortunately, I'm sorry to say, at this time, the owner has not taken any steps in relation to carry out any remedial works. The council is presently looking at what options are able to take to protect the short-term future of the building. Councillor Kent, supplementary. Mr Mayor, we've all seen uh, the pictures of the state, the pictures of the holes in the roof, the, the building is clearly deteriorating. 
and it, it's becoming a matter of real urgency to, to force the owners to fulfil their obligations as the owners of, of a, a Grade 2 listed building. And the council has obligations as well. The council has a statutory duty to ensure the safety of that building. So can I ask the portfolio holder to, to, to go back and to redouble the efforts and to report back to us soon uh, as, as to progress and actually securing the building? Councillor Cockshaw. I'm, I actually thank the uh, Councillor Kent for bringing that here. So there's a public thing now. So the, the council as a body understands that, the officers understand how imperative that is to the future of the town centre. And then the, it's upsetting that um, the owners haven't started them action. And I've been pursuing that through my portfolio. I will mention it tomorrow in my portfolio report uh, with the senior officers that this has been asked at full council last night and I expect an answer to come back to you and I will send a, a, a request a written answer to you what happens and a written report regularly to the board council as to what, what action has been taken and when they're going to be taken. Councillor Kent, final supplementary? No. Item 15, reports from members re representing the council on outside bodies. I'm not aware of any requested reports. Item 16, minutes of committees, they are listed on the agenda contents page. <coughs> Item 17, motion update report, can be found on page 101. Nope. Item 18, motions. Councillor Jeffries, you, would you like to propose and speak to your motion? Thank you, Mr Mayor. I think the motion speaks very clearly for the people of Thurrock, who will be adversely affected by the Labour Mayor of London's plan to expand ULES across Greater London in the summer of 2023. This change will affect thousands of Londoners who use their cars each day. More concerning for me, and I'm sure for all members of this chamber, the daily charge of £12.50 will also affect thousands of Thurrock residents who use their cars to travel into the zone. Residents travelling to work, to visit friends, those wanting to use Bellas Country Park for exercise, and sadly, those wishing to travel just up the road to pay their respect or lay to rest their loved ones at Corbett's Tay Crematorium in Upminster. With regards to the amendment put forward by Councillor Kent, whilst I'm totally in favour of measures to improve air quality, which helps with public health and in turn improves the climate, I cannot agree with the idea of consulting with the Mayor of London who has shown to have complete disregard to the voices of over 5,000 London residents who replied to the consultation. These residents were excluded from the headline figures and 90% of them were opposed to the ULES. If he can't be bothered to listen to his own residents, I'm fairly sure he won't listen to anyone in Thurrock. So, in conclusion, Mr Mayor, I would call upon the Mayor of London to cancel his ULES expansion. It's regressive, it's unfair, and it's a waste of money. I'd ask all members to support this motion and to urge all residents to go online and sign our Member of Parliament's petition to stop this fair, unfair tax on drivers. Thank you, Councillor Jeffries. Is your motion seconded? Councillor George Cockshaw, would you like to speak now or reserve your right? I reserve my right, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Cockshaw. I received an amendment to this motion from Councillor Kent and this has been tabled. Uh, Councillor Kent, would you like to speak to your amendment? Mr Mayor, I think we all understand the pressing need to improve air quality and public health, but I think that this scheme uh, being rolled out now in the way it is uh, could be another hit to working people in areas like Thurrock. Nationally, the Tories have crashed our economy, leaving thousands of people struggling to put food on the table and heat their homes. Locally, the Tories have bankrupted the council, and left residents facing a huge council tax hike and increases in fees and charges. And it's against this backdrop that those same people uh, may now struggle to afford to get to work. So I do believe that this is uh, an, an implementation, a decision that should have been delayed at least until we're on the other side of the cost of living crisis. Uh, Thurrock has many low income workers who rely on their cars and vans as there just isn't the public transport infrastructure here uh, that they have in central London. There will be a negative impact to the freight business in Thurrock, to small businesses and sole traders uh, who, tr who trade within the zone and may not be financially able to replace older vehicles. 
there's the real possibility also of non-compliant vehicles rather than travelling through the zone, skirting around the zone and, and therefore coming through Thurrock. So, you, you know, an unintended consequence. These kind of, kind of consequences uh, that you will get when you're uh, the neighbour to the zone, when you're on that hard edge. And, and you know, Council, Councillor Jeffrey says that he doesn't want to engage with Transport for London or, or the, uh, the, the Mayor's office. But, but I, I really do think that a motion should actually urge us to do something, uh, something positive. So in London, uh, you have the car scrappage scheme. There's no car scrappage scheme in Thurrock. It has to be worth a conversation with the Mayor's office to see if he will extend some element, at least, of the car scrappage scheme uh, to neighbouring boroughs. We know that there is a public transport deficit in Thurrock. It must at least be worth a conversation with Transport for London to see what they can do uh, to help improve public transport uh, in, in Thurrock, uh, to lever in some TfL funding in, into Thurrock. There are many things that Cabinet could do if they just had the will to work across boundaries and, you know, uh, something that Councillor Cocktail said earlier, we can stand here and take the same old partisan lines every month, or we can change and try to improve life for the residents of Thurrock. Uh, Mr Mayor, I hope that people support uh, the amendment. Thank you, Councillor Kent. Is your amendment seconded? Councillor Worrell, would you like to speak now or reserve your rights? Thank you, Councillor Worrell. Does any member wish to comment on the amended or substantive motion? Councillor Mayne. Councillor Jeffries, could you lend Councillor Mayne your microphone? Right, it's like waiting for buses, Mr Mayor. Um, I think there's a very good reason uh, not to support the, the amendment. Um, the, the motion moved by Councillor uh, Jeffries sums up, I think, where we, sh where sh we should be as a council. Um, Councillor Kent, I think, has assumed we haven't tried talking to TfL. He obviously hasn't ever tried to talk to the Mayor's Office or TfL because it's, it really is a, a one-way street. Let me assure you, we've tried as hard as we can to uh, negotiate with them. We've responded to consultations. We've asked for further information so that we can make an informed decision. And guess what? Nothing. Nothing has come back. So I'm afraid we've done that. We've tried that already, and they haven't played ball at all. So further rounds of engagement with them, we, we will continue that. But I'm afraid in his arrogance, the mayor's office just simply doesn't want to consult with us. I think as well, the first part of Councillor Kent's <coughs> amendment says that we should support measures aimed at tackling congestion and um, air quality, uh, improving air quality. We do, which is why we shouldn't support your motion. Because in actual fact, what the mayor is seeking to do is offload London's air pollution on Thurrock, because you're quite right. People with non-compliant vehicles will seek to reroute, and Thurrock is where they will reroute. There's also evidence, when, when the, the low emission zone was first introduced, there's evidence that shows hauliers in particular decided to send their cleaner vehicles into London and re-divert their more polluting vehicles to the outlying area. Guess who's the outlying area? That's us. That's why I would urge all members to support Councillor Jeffrey's motion because I think it sums up, as I say, where we should be. And in some ways, the, the amendment seems to almost justify what the, mayor, the, the London Mayor is seeking to do. In actual fact, it's abhorrent. It's not only going to have uh, knock-on financial impacts for people in Thurrock and, you know, so, some parts of Thurrock are in the 20 most deprived areas of England. They're going to be impacted by this. It's not just about that, though. It's about the fact that we, we will get the knock-on congestion, the knock-on um, displacement of, of poor, poor air quality here. There's a whole host of reasons why this is unfair. Um, and so I, I'll be supporting Councillor Jeffrey's motion, and I would urge all members to do the same. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Maynard. Councillor Gledhill. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, Councillor Maney actually stole uh, most of my uh, good points, uh, including what it's like to try and deal with uh, the Mayor of London's office. Um, and that will be irrespective of it being a Labour Mayor currently. Uh, prior to that, it was somewhat difficult, but not impossible, to get a response from the previous Mayor's um, uh, office in relation to anything that applied to Thurrock. I, I certainly know when it came to uh, taxi consultations, for instance, I, I would receive regular um, requests for uh, information uh, and, and indeed our thoughts uh, when it's suited but the very second we ask uh, in um, return 
um, I think um, the new leader will be waiting for that, and indeed any new leader after the current leader uh, will still be waiting for that for some time. But one of the things we also um, need to remember is there are an awful lot of people who live uh, on the outskirts uh, of London, some of them a mere couple of hundred metres away from uh, Thurrock, who work in Thurrock, uh, supply support in Thurrock, irrespective of whether it's council officers here or, or, or whether it's uh, care workers or indeed those working at local hospitals and uh, indeed other institutions that we all use. They will be hit by this and then they will need to make the choice. Do they still continue to work in Thurrock or in or around Thurrock or outside of London um, or earn more inside of London to cover this daily charge that they will be hit with? Um, we just can't ignore this. I fully see um, Councillor Kent's points of, um, in his proposed amendment, uh, in favour of measures that um, seek to impact the air quality, uh, public health, uh, tackle climate uh, change, uh, and indeed uh, reduce traffic congestion. But as has been pointed out, um, a lot of this traffic, or say a lot of this traffic, some of this traffic will just be pushed our way, and they will go round the outside. Uh, they, will, they will continue to block off um, the uh, Dartford Tunnel, uh, rather than driving that, that few metres into London, or sorry, a few miles into London, uh, and cutting down in the way they possibly can um, uh, at the moment. Uh, he also mentioned, of course, about we should delay this, or it should be delayed until after the cost of living crisis. This shouldn't be delayed, it should be stopped permanently. We cannot keep on throwing tax after tax after tax on motorists based on where they live, um, uh, and hope that that's going to have a massive impact on um, either climate change, public health, or so on. We cannot escape that this is the only, more, the only method of transport for many people, <coughs> irrespective of whether they're driving in and around East London, North London, or from there to us and back again. So I will be supporting Councillor Jeffrey's motion uh, in the way that is uh, put forward. Um, and, and perhaps um, this time, uh, the Mayor will actually uh, listen to uh, the people of Thurrock as well, realise the impact it's going to have on us, and I'm sure that the people of Dartford and all the other local authorities that surround London that are not London authorities will also be doing the same uh, and asking for this to be stopped. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Clotil. Does any other member wish to speak? Uh, Councillor Pearce. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I support Councillor Jeffrey's motion. As a councillor who represents a ward bordering Greater London, I very much support this motion. Many Avery residents travel to and fro Avery on a regular basis, me included, to visit friends and family for shopping or to work. Many also visit the crematorium at Corbett's Tay. The London Mayor's new road tax will hit many constituents of mine who cannot afford to upgrade their cars or vans. I've heard from residents who fear that if the mayor gets his way with this proposal, the next step will be to extend the congestion zone. So even more motorists will be squeezed to fill in the London coffers. They have every right to be alarmed. Avery and Uplands Ward is home to hard working people, but many are just making ends meet. The Mayor's proposed road tax extension will cause some of many residents further financial hardship or leave them isolated from Greater London. This decision is unfair and all councillors must join together in opposing Labour's new tax on motorists. Thank you. Councillor Bass. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. I support original motion because ULEDs will massively affect many residents, particularly of Muslim faith, whose loved ones are buried in cemetery in Redbridge. And this charge will make it very difficult for them to visit their loved ones' graves. So I will be supporting Councillor Jeffrey's motion. No other contributions? Councillor Co Council Watson. Thank you, Mayor. I think we get a bit hit up on this amendment. It's not very far off from Councillor Jeffries anyway. The thing that we want is that for cabinets to take ownership and then try and speak to TfL and the Mayor of London's office. Just keep trying, like we kept trying with GLUC and got an intervention here. So keep trying and you will eventually get there. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Watson. Anyone else? Oh, Councillor Piccolo. 
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, I, I fully support the motion. I, I think what we have to look at is, to a certain extent, this is an age and a poverty tax. It's all right for those people that are in full-time employment, um, got a reasonable job, but a lot of our residents have got, have moved out, and now are elderly and have moved out to Thurrock um, <coughs> over the last 20 or 30 years, but still have family that live within outer London. And it's going to be restricted. They haven't got the means um, to go out and buy a car that complies with the, with the congestion zone. Um, so they're going to be restricted on their movements. They're either going to face any additional costs. So actually, this is a tax on the poor and the, and the, the less fortunate. Um, so I fully support the motion. Thank you, Councillor Pickard. Councillor Sammons. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I fully support <coughs> Councillor Jeffrey's motion. As an owner of a small business, many people I know have small businesses. And even if you could afford a new car or van, the supply of those is absolutely abysmal at this point in time. So it's not just a case of people being able to afford. You can't get them in any case. So you could end up on a year's waiting list, and that is the realistic truth. So I think this scheme should be scrapped altogether because we're going to end up with many, many small businesses that just will not make it. They've gone through the COVID period. They've struggled. We've now got the cost of living. To come with this is just horrendous for them. So I, for one, will be supporting <laughs> Councillor Jeffrey's motion. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Councillor. <coughs> Councillor Byrne. Yeah, I find this a bit rich, coming from the people that want to charge people to park outside their own homes. Something. Councillor Johnson. Thank you, Mr Mayor. And I, I support the uh, Councillor Jeffrey's um, motion for all the things that have been said, but just to make a, a, a couple of points, I don't think, well, I know Councillor Jeffries didn't say that we don't want to speak to the Mayor. Counts, both he and Councillor Maney made it quite clear that TfL don't listen to us. And, you know, with the, the latest consultations that this Mayor ignored completely, what would be the point? Because it's quite clear he will not listen to us. So I will be supporting Councillor Jeffrey's uh, motion for all the reasons said uh, and not the amendment by Councillor Kent. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Johnson. Councillor Cockshaw, uh, you reserved your right. Would you like to speak on the substantive? I'm, I'm just really concerned by this because for my residents in South Ockingham, we are going to be looking at you work in London, you're self-employed, you're self you <coughs> drive in for work. It's £60 a week extra if you do not comply. Like this is it's all that needs a stealth tax. And that, that this is all it is. We're going to be filling TfL's coffers to pay for failings over years and years. And I can't understand why we will just note this, if I'm honest. We are, no, we are noting the impact and in Councillor Kent's motion. And I just think we, we need to take a stance. We can't just note and accept and rub our hands together. I think we actually need to focus our efforts in opposing this. This is going to take hard-working residents in Thurrock, as all the other councillors beside me have said, and it's going to hit them hard. Why, sh why should we accept that and let that happen? And I'm, that's why I'm getting behind what our Member of Parliament is doing. I'm encouraging <coughs> residents to sign the petition because we can't, this is a £12.50 charge that's just going to hit residents and hit residents. You want to drive through and you take the wrong turning at the A13 at Wellington? Charged if you don't comply. If you drive up and you want to go to see to Upminster, which is a stone throw away from Bellas, you get charged if you don't comply. This is, I can't see that as an active way of trying to in achieve anything right now. It is, I'm, I'm completely, it's why I seconded Councillor Jeffrey's motion. It, we need to take an active stance to condemn this. Thank you, Councillor Cockshaw. Councillor Worrell, you reserved your right. Would you wish to speak? Mr. Mayor, no, thank okay. you. Okay. Uh, Councillor Kent, as the move of the amendment, do you wish a right to reply? 
Yeah, I mean, I, I, I will uh, just, just address some of the points that's made. I mean, the motion says uh, extend the ultra low emission zone to Greater London and notes with concern the impact this would have on many Thurrock residents. That's exactly what the amendment says, actually. So that's where the word uh, note comes from. Councillor Byrne has made the point that it is utterly hypocritical to, to sit there complaining about taxes on motorists uh, when you are recommending introducing charges for people to park outside their own home, introducing charges in car parks where they don't, where they don't currently have them, to hiking charges in other car parks. We've heard of, about uh, people wanting to go to the crematorium being charged. Of course we all deplore that, but frankly, if you want to go to a funeral in East Tilbury, you have to park in Coalhouse Coalhouse Fork Car Park, and guess what? You've just introduced a charge there. So, you, you know, look to yourself first and get your own house in order. And all I'm doing on this, on this amendment is actually asking you to do something rather than sitting there whinging, asking for petitions to be signed so that you can harvest people's names and addresses. I'm asking you to try and engage with the Mayor of London, engage with TfL, difficult though we know that is, and actually try to get some mitigation of this scheme for the people you're supposed to represent. Councillor Jeffries, do you wish to sum up? Um, thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, I've only got a few words to say. I mean, Councillor Kent talked about the cost of living, so I mean, this is the worst time to implement, as Councillor Cottrell Jr said, you know, £60 a week for some people to pay, only nine months to prepare, they can't buy a new vehicle, energy bills are up, inflation's up, few can afford this kind of, of charge. It needs to stop. The ULES was never intended to apply to outer London. It's a smash and grab raid on drivers' wallets that has nothing to do with air quality and everything to do with the Labour Mayor's mismanagement of TL, TfL's finances. And it comes at the worst possible time. And I'd just reiterate um, the point that I made earlier, and that is 5, 000, over 5,000 responses were taken out of the headline figure. 90% of them were opposed to the ULES expansion. If the mayor is prepared to do that, along with his officials, I hardly think he's going to listen to Thurrock Council when we ask him to put his hand in his pocket and pay for measures in this borough. Thank you, Councillor Jeffries. Uh, we'll now go to a vote on the amendment. Can I see a clear show of hands in favour of Councillor Kent's amendment? Can I see a clear show of hands against? Any abstentions? Uh, so the amendment falls. Now we'll move to the vote on the substantive motion. Councillor Jeffries? Uh, leave five members if you want to requisition vote. Okay. Democratic Services, can you conduct a requisition vote, please? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. When I call your name, if you could indicate whether you are for, against, or abstain. Councillor Abbas. For. Councillor Allen. For. Councillor Anderson. For. Councillor Arnold. For. Uh, Councillor Paul Arnold. For. Uh, Councillor Byrne. Councillor Carter. For. Councillor Chukwa. Councillor Collins. For. Councillor George Cockshall. For. Councillor Mark Cockshall. For. Councillor Duffin. For. Councillor Gledhill. For. Councillor Howden. For. Councillor Holloway. Councillor Jeffries. For. Councillor Johnson. For. Councillor Kelly. For. Councillor Kathy Kent. Yes. Councillor John Kent. Against. Councillor Kerrin. Yes. Councillor Lydiard. Yes. Councillor Little. Yes. Councillor Maney. Yes. Councillor Massey. 
Councillor Mays? For. Councillor Muldowney? Against. Councillor Panjala? <coughs> Councillor Pearce? For. Councillor Piccolo? For. Councillor Polly? For. Councillor Pothecary? Against. Councillor Ralph? For. Councillor Raper? Councillor Redsell? For. Councillor Sammons? For. Councillor Shinnick? Against. Councillor Snell? For. Councillor Spillman? For. Councillor Tandy? For. Councillor Watson? Against. And Councillor Worrell? Twenty nine in favour of the motion, thirteen against. So the motion passes. Motion two. Councillor Massey, could you please propose your motion? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, members may be aware that National Highways have recently submitted and had approved their development consent order for the Lower Thames Crossing Scheme to move forward to the next stage in the planning inspectorate process. The Lund uh, Lower Thames Crossing Task Force seek assurances that the Council is committed to opposing the scheme as currently presented and promote this message through Council communication channels. I feel it's important to have confidence in the Council's capacity to make a good case in the protection of residents and businesses against the disruption and destruction of the Lower Thames Crossing. Those working for, on the Lower Thames Crossing for the Council have produced some really good work to Task Force and I hope they'll be able to continue this important work for the benefit of the borough. The Lower Thames Crossing project as proposed consumes much of our green belt. It impacts on our local plan, it impacts on our residents' health and would be a permanent physical barrier going right through the heart of our borough and its communities. The cost in carbon and money is both high and I agree with both members of Parliament of Borough this is an outdated project and no longer delivers the benefits intended. I would urge residents, businesses and other groups to register as an interested party with the Planning Inspectorate this is effectively reserving the right to make representation later in the process. Registration for this closes on Friday the 24th of February 2023. I'd ask members tonight to reaffirm opposition to the Lower Thames Crossing as currently proposed and support this motion and ensure the Council have the resources required to communicate and pr promote opposition and keep residents and businesses informed throughout the planning process. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Massey. Is your motion seconded? Councillor Byrne. Oh, sorry, sorry, was that Councillor Byrne or Councillor Allen? Oh, Councillor Allen then, would you like to... You're not interchangeable, very distinct. Would you like to speak now or reserve your rights? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I totally support uh, Councillor Massey's uh, motion, uh, 100%. Thank you. Thank you, uh, thank you, Councillor Allen. Uh, there is an amendment from Councillor Kent. Uh, Councillor Kent, would you like to propose and speak to your motion, uh, to your amendment? Um, Mr Mayor, I, I, I think we are all agree that the Lower Thames Crossing, as it as it's currently configured, will be an ecological and environmental disaster for the borough. And it won't actually achieve uh, the aims of the crossing. It won't increase the resilience of the local road network, the regional road network, nor the national road network. It will just drive... Uh, that motorway through the heart of the borough, divide the borough, divide communities, and end up with that kind of toxic triangle uh, where, where we're boxed in by, by, by motorways. I don't think that that's changed. Uh, what has changed, and the reason for my uh, amendment, is that for the last probably 10 years, we've had active opposition to this scheme that's been backed with council funding to make sure that we could hold public engagement events and that we could hire experts to advise us and to make sure we're making the best case that we possibly can. 
What has changed is that we now know that we're no longer funding those experts that we desperately need. And without putting some funds there, our opposition turns from being active opposition to passive opposition. Uh, I don't believe that passive opposition will get us anywhere. We need to be active. So my amendment is, is to ask Cabinet to identify sufficient resources to make sure that we can properly uh, oppose uh, this, this proposal that we all agree is bad for Thurrock. Thank you, Councillor Kent. Is your amendment seconded? <laughs> I think I'll give it to Councillor Byrne this time. <laughs> Councillor Byrne, would you wish to speak to the amendment or reserve your right? Um, yes, I'd just like to tell people the Lower Thames Crossing, the people that want it, they have produced 6,600 pages to blind us. So we need money to fight it. It's just, it's a no brainer. <coughs> or otherwise, they're going to walk all over us and we can't have Thurrock split in half by this tunnel. Thank you, Councillor Byrne. Um, do members wish to debate the amendment or, or the substantive? Councillor Mays. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, <coughs> I will be supporting Councillor Massey's motion tonight, uh, or a substantive motion. I think he's done a wonderful job as chair of LTC, and uh, I think we need to continue that battle and stop this from coming through our borough. Thank you. Councillor Maney. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I too will be supporting Councillor Massey's motion. Um, I think everyone in this chamber is in agreement in that we're opposed to the uh, new Thames crossing. We know the impact it's going to have on the borough and we're all determined to fight that to the best of our abilities. But I think the, the, qu the question is how do we resource our response to that? Thurrock residents don't want it, we don't want it, why should Thurrock taxpayers therefore bear the cost? of funding our response to that. I think actually we have a very good argument in going to national highways and insisting that they fund uh, our response through the planning performance agreement. We used to get 60% funding, we now only receive 40% and that's, that's completely unfair. Um, and it's at odds with the levels of funding that other local authorities get in relation to these kind of projects. So I know that Councillor Kent's motion, you, you could argue that what I'm saying falls under that because it's not directly saying that the council funds this, but I think it could be construed as saying that. And I think that we should support Councillor Massey's uh, motion for that reason. We are determined to resource our response as best we can, but I think we need to go to the people who are looking to inflict this on us and say, you need to come up with the money to help us respond. That, that is a, a fair response and that's something that we will do. Uh, as uh, Councillor Mays has done, I would like to also say thank you to um, Councillor Massey because, because he has been nothing but stalwart in uh, uh, chairing the, the task force on this and regularly presented himself before Cabinet to report back on uh, what the task force is doing and keeping us informed. And I have to say, um, as an opposition councillor, he has done sterling work and it, you know, it's good to see at least one opposition councillor coming to Cabinet and engaging in the process and I'm very grateful for him for doing that. But as I said, on this side I think we'll be supporting his motion because there are more ways, more, more things we need to do to look at how we can properly resource our response and I think that's something we'll go away, we'll look at and we'll bring back proposals at a later date that is a bit, is a bit broader than what the, the amendment seems to be proposing. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Manny. Councillor Kerrin? You had your hand up. Oh. Okay, Councillor Redsill. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I will be supporting Councillor Massey. I think this has been an ongoing situation we've had. It, all it's going to do is cut Thurrock in half. I think it's the first time the whole of the council have been together on this. There are many business, the docks, nobody wants it. Too many consultations have been done and I think the general public getting fed up with the consultations. The task force has done a brilliant job um, in, in what they're doing. So I think we, you know, we've got to support it. it we've, it's blighted people's lives from the beginning. It's made people move from the area. It's made people get rid of their homes. They can't borrow on their homes to put in kitchens or whatever because it, it, it doesn't let them do that. So I think it has blighted many, many lives and I think it's got to end. 
we've got to get rid of it. It's going to go right through the middle of Thurrock and finish us off. Anybody wanting to go to the M25 has got to go to the Manorway or to Asda roundabout. Nobody's going to do that. It, it's wrong, totally wrong. So I'll be supporting Councillor Massey. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Red Cyril. Councillor Maldoni. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, having sat on the task force since being a councillor um, and having dealt with um, national highways or Highways England as they were back then um, for getting on for three and a half, four years now, um, I can say that without properly resourcing our response, now that we've, we've, we've now entered um, the period where basically we're going to get information thrown at us, we need to have the resources in place to be able to fight this. Otherwise, um, national highways are going to walk all over us. Um, they dismiss us anyway. Um, you know, when they do come to the task force, they come with, you know, they, we never get information beforehand. They come and quite often they've got a team of people there. Um, they don't share the information with us before we get to this implementation period because they know that once we're in this period, um, we're going to be very, very hard pressed, even with proper resourcing, to put up a defence. Now, we've talked about the ULES charge. Believe me, this is going to have a much, much bigger impact on every single resident in Thurrock. I mean, this is going to be a disaster for business. This is going to be a disaster for local residents' health, for wealth, um, all aspects of life. The disruption of the um, construction period, which they now say is going to take five to six years, is probably going to take long, uh, as long as ten years, maybe longer. Um, it's going to disrupt every, every aspect of our residents' lives. And um, I will be voting in favour of Councillor Kent's amendment which adds the bit about resources it's absolutely essential that our response to this period is properly resourced otherwise it's going to be a disaster for our residents so please please can we identify the resources that will allow us to fight this thank you leader Thank you, thank you very much, and thank you, uh, Councillor Madoni, there for that heart-hearted plea. And I, I, I understand the concerns, and I understand the amendment. I'll be supporting Councillor Fraser, and I reiterate the other other items that people have said tonight that how, how great you've been on in that committee and the committee chair. And I think what's noticeable in the last three or four years, and I've been um, looking after the strategic highway and the Lower Thames crossing for. Uh, since I've been a cabinet member and, and the, the noticeable sea change in the work and, and about how it, uh, what has happened in that committee in this last two years since you're three years since you've been chairing it and it's been tremendous and a great help and the officers have thanked continuously coming when they come to me about how that hard work has worked and paid off in, in getting some. Sadly we didn't get everything through and we've now gone to the planning process but it does come on to resourcing and sufficient resources. I actually think what we should be doing is looking at when we've spent this money so far and we've resourced it very well and it's been resourced quite highly in the last two or three years and we've done a lot of work we shouldn't waste that money and to get to the planning process we need to make sure it's sufficient i can see that and i can put a good best value inspection best value process through the through the 114 process to show that we got to really do that but that's the process got to be taken it's not cabinet it's got to go through to make sure we've got to prove its value for the people of Thurrock. and you're, what you've said tonight every item every councillor here adds to that to show as we go through there that that, that process through our 151 officer and through the book there to make sure we can actually get the it commission mission resource and i thank people for bringing this tonight because that only helps i've told that members want this residents want this and we've got to make sure through the planning process that we resource this to make sure to get the best because if we don't and it does come growth will be disadvantaged in this area and that is another lever we need to use is increase our growth to increase to make the success of Thurrock and we can't be able to do that with a lower Thames crossing because growth would be stifled in this borough because of that so there's multiple reasons we need to actually not just not having it 
but even if you did have it and it did go through the plan and the plan is accepted, we need to put a, put a good explanation of why this is a disadvantage in all reasons. We should oppose this half-heartedly. Thank you. Councillor Byrne, you will get to speak as the um, secondary of the amendment. Councillor Polly. Thank you very much, Mr Mayor. Uh, thank you, Councillor Massey, for bringing this motion to Council. Um, I also like to thank you for your chairmanship of the task force uh, and to all the members on that particular task force because I, I do believe that that is the finest example that this council has of collaborative working, of people coming together with a common, um, a common uh, outlook on, on the subject matter and working together Councillor Maldoni, it will affect her ward immensely. Uh, I, I, I live in the west of the borough. We suffer immensely because of the congestion and the, the, the problems that the, the, the Dartford Crossing, uh, together with the M25 and other and lakeside traffic. There, but this, we all agree, this Lower Thames Crossing is is not right for Thurrock, it's not what it's not wanted here, and everybody's been unanimous in that message from the start. <coughs> I'd also like to make reference to the Lower Thames Crossing Action Group, who are totally volunteers. Um, they have done hours and hours of unpaid work on, on and their input and their um, reports and replies and the, their energies in motivating local residents uh, through forums and other groups to, to actually um, object to the Lower Thames crossing are, are to be commended. But the council hasn't resourced them. That, 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 is, that is the community coming together with a common goal. We've we are committed. There's, there's never been any doubt that this council is committed in opposing this, this proposal. Um, as, as leaders made reference to it, we, we are in a difficult situation. We've brought, with the BVI and the, S, uh, and the Section 114, it's not always going to be our decision. It's where that money is best placed and best serves the... the um, residents of this borough we we will continue we are committed I, I know that right across the chamber that we we are all committed to to, to fight against the, this proposal in its current format um, I don't think there's one ward that won't be affected by it, in it and every ward will be affected negatively um, so uh, I, I thank Councillor Massey for the motion and um, I, I feel I would support his. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Worrell. <coughs> Thanks, Mr Mayor. Um, I think that we're all on the same page. I just don't think that, you know, like, why can't we just say we think that we should provide the resource? You know, I'm sure Councillor Massey is hoping that you provide the resource because his motion's worth nothing if we don't provide resource. You know, so I just don't see why we're, we're messing around with it, really. I just think we're all on the same page. And if we give up now, we're giving up at the final hurdle. I feel like we are walking in to a problem and the residents are not going to forgive us for not resourcing this. Yeah. They never got us into this financial mess the BVI or anything else that means that we've got to justify the spend. If we didn't have that going on, we would be providing the resource. And we've been told in closed meetings that as long as we can put together a good argument about why something needs to be funded, um, we, will not, we will be able to put forward a good case and very probably not take a decision that leaves Thurrock in a worse position should we not have done that piece of work. So I don't even see 
I don't know why you wouldn't want to resource it, because your residents will want you to resource it. Your residents will want you to fight this to the death. Um, so I just don't know why there's this... Oh, well, well done, Councillor Massey. Well done, all of us, because we've all been to the consultations. We've all spent hours filling in forms and speaking out and challenging those Highways England people. So I just think that we owe it to our residents to make sure that this council, where possible, resources it. Um, so thank you, Mr Mayor. I was just a bit confused. Thank you, Councillor Morrill. Councillor Byrne, as the seconder to the amendment, would you like to sum up? Yes, please, and add a few things. Obviously, yeah, thanks to Fraser. I think we've worked on it three years now, been together. So, yeah, it's been great. But just want to go back to the, the funding. National Highways have already spent a billion pound on this, on admin, fighting it and trying to beat us. So, for example, we have got a comms company already that will wipe the floor with Highways England, but they need paying now. Relying on funding from elsewhere will be too late. The staff that are fighting it for us have already been stood down. They're on no wages. They've been made redundant. So the funding, if it doesn't happen today, like this comms company, need 200,000 to beat Highways England. We need it now, not relying on somebody that's going to pay it maybe in the future. We need funding. Now, you can't stop it now. It's gone too far. Councillor Allen, as the seconder to the substantive motion, uh, would you like to speak? Thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, I'd just like to, uh, you know, uh, commend Fraser for being a good standing chair for all these years. Uh, and I personally uh, sat on the task force as well. And uh, I've done a lot of work, you know, over the years. And you've probably heard me say these words before uh, in chamber, uh, that the proposal of the LTC is going to be both an environmental and an ecological disaster to Burrock. And I will say this again, that it's driving a stake through the beating heart of Burrock. Uh, I, I can't say any more than that. I, I carry a heavy heart when it comes to, to this proposal. And I do believe it's going to be absolutely detrimental to the future health of Burrock for many, many years to come. So again, I support... Uh, Fraser's work on this and I, you know, I can only commend him like, like that, you know, the, the Chamber's done this afternoon, this evening. So uh, that's about it, Mr Mayor. It's, it's uh, environmental and an ecological disaster in the waiting. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Allen. Uh, Councillor Kent, as a move of the amendment, would you like to sum up? Yeah, Mr Mayor, it seems to be, I, I hope, a little confusion. What my amendment says is that council also calls on cabinet to identify sufficient resources to ensure effective opposition to the proposals. I haven't said that that money should necessarily come from council's coffers, and as Councillor Maney has said, there are other avenues that could have been explored. In fact, what Councillor Maney said was, I'm not going to vote for the amendment, but that's what we're going to do anyway. Uh, we then heard from Councillor Cockshaw, who, who seemed to say it's not our decision, that it won't be up to Cabinet, that it will be up to the Commissioners. I do just have to remind everybody that the Commissioners are Essex County Council, uh, who have supported this crossing from day one. Mr Mayor, earlier, uh, it, it seems to me that there is a lot of agreement. We all want to identify the funds, the funding. People have said that that's what they're going to do anyway. Not voting for the amendment is what Councillor Cockshaw might have called the same old partisan lines. The only reason you won't support this amendment is that it's us putting it forward. Yep. Councillor Massey, is the move, uh, as the proposer of the substantive motion, would you like to sum up? Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. Welcome the word from colleagues from across the chamber. Um, at a time where Forest Council faces its challenges. It's important to remember the challenges that will be created by the Lower Thames Crossing and it is vital that we know where it is in the planning process and that we send a clear message to National Highways and the Secretary of State for Transport to remain opposed and urge those decision makers to hear our views. Thank you very much Councillor Massey. Right, we'll now vote on the amendment. Can I please see a clear, 
Councillor Cox. Should clarify my comment because I never mentioned. You're allowed a point of clarification. Yeah, yes. clarification. I, I said the 114, which is a from, which is a section 115 officer. It's not a commissioner's decision. That is a wholehearted decision of this council. So there is no commissioner's. That's not the commission. That is the decision of our 11, our section 151 officer. A 114 notice is issued, and that was the conversation we had in a meeting three weeks ago. Commissioners aren't part of that. Thank you, Councillor Cockshaw. Um, so we're voting on Councillor Kent's amendment. Can I please see a clear show of hands in favour of the amendment? Can I please see a clear show of hands against? Clear show of hands of abstentions. No, but that's the amendment. Right, the amendment falls. We will now vote on Councillor Massey's original substantive motion. Can I see a clear show of hands in favour? Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Motion two passes. <coughs> motion three, Councillor Kent, would you please propose your motion? Mr. Mr. Mayor, I hope this motion is uh, somewhat less contentious than the past few motions have been, and I don't intend to speak on it for very long. Uh, we, we all know that Grays Athletic Football Club lost their home uh, back in 2010 when the uh, then owner of the ground sold it for development. Since then, they've had a variety of homes, sharing with East Thurrock United, uh, moving down to Rush Green, and now sharing with Avery Football Club. Uh, it's really important to the town of Grays and for that club, which is a fantastic community football club, that they're able to relocate somewhere in what we recognise as geographical uh, Grays. It was partly because of what happened to Grays Athletic that we changed the planning rules and we introduced a policy that said that any uh, sports, sports club that is displaced by a development uh, will be found a new, new land within the borough will be identified for them. Uh, that hasn't happened for Lakeside Hammers who are displaced by the potential development of Arena Essex. So what this motion asks is that we use the planning process, we use the local plan process to identify suitable land uh, for those two clubs. Clubs that have brought uh, only good to, to, to Thurrock and have reflected well of Thurrock uh, up and down the country. Uh, Mr Mayor, with that I move the motion. Thank you, Councillor Kent. Is your motion seconded? Councillor Kerry, would you like to speak now or reserve your right? I'll reserve, Mr Mayor. Okay. Any member wish to speak on this motion? Leader of the Council? I welcome this motion. I think as a, um, a local plan, and we, as we move to a local plan, through the local plan process, it's an important process and sports vision, and I always talk about the play part of, uh, or, or, of work, live and play, and this is an important element of that, and I think uh, if it's our local plan is anything, it should be important, not just about homes or houses or whatever you want to go, it should be about the enjoyment and uh, the, about for our residents and that <laughs> leisure facilities are critical for a local plan. I welcome the motion. Thank you, Councillor Cockshaw. Councillor Polly. Thank you very much, Mr Mayor. Um, as, as most people know, I'm a returning councillor and I think um, if I can go back to 2006, I believe it was, when Grays Athletic were involved in the FA Cup. And I do believe Councillor Kent and myself actually went to a, a bowling stadium and see them play Woking um, at the time. At, at that juncture, they were, and I, I'm not football minded, so I'll, you have to excuse me if I'm, if I'm incorrect on the facts, but I know they were going up into a conference league or something like that. To, to be compliant to enter that league, they didn't have sufficient inf uh, transport infrastructure. They didn't have sufficient parking. 
they they came to the council at the time and we agreed when we had a car park opposite the the building to to put that into their proposal that they could use the council car park as an overflow car park and and coaches were arranged for their their um fa cup matches um if that's correct but so this is not the first time that we have been asked to support Grays Athletic and, and we were willing to do that and support them at, um, at that juncture. But with that limited knowledge, um, confining a, effectively what is a business now, all, all, all of these football clubs or... Um, sports facilities have have to be profitable have to uh, so i'm not i'm not 100 percent sure whether what consultation council kent has had with gray's athletic as regards where they want to be cited we are gray Thorup. i i do agree that in the whole uh, object of the local development plan it is to use site allocations and 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 put things into plan to see as as leader has said not just a a development plan that's all about housing but provides a soft financial structure and and makes it a, a desirable place to live and i think supporting these um th th these groups are correct but i Confining them to a geographical area without having the knowledge whether that would actually allow them to 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 grow and and to achieve the results they have. Um, I, I haven't got enough knowledge on on that to know if that is appropriate to confine them to to a geographical area. Um, but I, I I think it's not the first time council has supported this particular organisation. Um, and, and I think that anything that encourages um, activity and, and healthy living it should be supported. Thank you. Councillor Mays. Thank you, Mr Mayor. No, I echo everything that's been said so far. I think in, with, with Grays Athletic, they have been pushed from pillar to post, and I think having a place to call their own home will be absolutely magic. I remember going to um, the, the Grey's Ath as, as, a, as a child and watching um, even down to the fireworks that used to be there and simple things for community-based uh, activities. So, in, And also it's about the, the youth set up as well. So it's not just about uh, impacting just the football team. It's a whole sports ecosystem uh, with that. So I, th I really do support this motion. I think... Um, the sooner the better, uh, even just a place to call their, their own at the moment, I think would be advantageous, but definitely um, with a local plan, get that right, get it in the right place, and then move forward. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Mays. Councillor Gledhill. Uh, uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, and I will be supporting this wholeheartedly. Um, I do feel that, um, obviously, having a number of conversations in the past in relation certainly to uh, the Grays Athletic, um, uh, situation uh, as everyone can see being such a, uh, a fit active human being uh, and attending football every single week um, never um, it's not really something that's high on my radar but what I do understand and what I do hear is whenever we're knocking on doors is or when I'm at the barbers or when I'm in the street is what's happening with Grays Athletic we don't want it in Averley we don't want it in East Thurrock we want it back in Grays and when you start looking at what happened when it was in Grays. I lived very close to, to, to the site. It was exceptionally busy on a Saturday. The shops were busier. Um, the local um, restaurants and pubs got busier a little bit before and uh, certainly afterwards. Um, there was a lot of traffic for a small amount of time, but there was an awful lot of benefit. Um, people literally walking from, you know, fairly close who live local, being able to get there quickly and indeed, either on foot or um, uh, with sufficient parking and so on, um, it made it a, a good, affordable day out for families. Um, as I say, it's not something that interested me. Neither is Speedway. 
However, when I've certainly spoken with uh, Councillor Coxall in the past in, uh, as part of his portfolio, um, the amount of awards and um, um, accolades that the, the, the Speedway team got was absolutely fantastic. I didn't realise that there was a, a, a league table for them and they were really quite high, bringing in Sky, bringing in you know, like the, the big news agencies as well. So why wouldn't we um, support this? Um, and I, we do have to always look at what the monitoring officer and others say, uh, and we always thank them for it. The, the local plan will not identify or allocate a particular site, sorry, a particular sports group um, or, or sports activity. The Councillor Kent's motion is not asking for a specific one, it's asking for a generalised area, which is absolutely fantastic and one that we all should be supporting. So I will certainly be adding uh, my name uh, to this one and thank Councillor Kent for, for putting it forward. And finally, Mr Mayor, I would really ask that every single resident take part in a local plan. It's not just about housing, it's not just about where industry and, and business will go. It is also about, as Councillor Coxwell said, it is about that play, it is about that entertainment. We don't want this to turn into uh, a, a borough that is a dormitory for London. What we want it to be is that it's a place where people from London come here to spend their money here because we've got the facilities, the sports and the entertainment in Thurrock. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Gledhill. Councillor Ralph. Thank you, Mr. <coughs> Mayor. Yeah, I totally support this. Um, I, I miss Speedway. I mean, I grew up down there in Essex. Uh, 1st of May 1979 when it first opened. Now, I, from motor racing to to Speedway to the Sky Sports Nights, I, I did go. Well, not, you know, some of us did go. It, I loved it. It was fantastic. I really miss it. Um, definitely with the Grays Football Club. I don't want to say I've got to support Grays Football Club. You know, East Farrock is obviously the better team. But I definitely want East Farrock to have a home. Uh, local clubs support each other. And anything we can do for this to get them a home, it can't come soon enough. Thank you. Councillor Jeffries. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, I wholeheartedly support this, this motion. My youth, I wasn't born in Thurrock, I was born in Coventry. I spent Saturday afternoons Highfield Road watching Coventry City play football. And in the evening, I would spend it in a place called Brandon watching Coventry <coughs> Bees at the Speedway. The local authority there failed to support either of these in the local plan. We now no longer have Speedway in Coventry and we no longer have the football um, in the city either. So I think, as Councillor Coxwell said, the local plan is not just about building homes, it's about providing a community and definitely Speedway and football should be at the heart of the, the local plan. Thank you. Councillor Redsell. Thank you, Mr Mayor. As I chair the local plan, I agree with Councillor, Councillor Gledhill, um, everybody needs to take note. Um, I invited um, Grays Athletic to come to one of the committees to talk about their aspirations and see what they want and what they need. And I think um, we are not here, as we've said, we're not here to supply them with land, but they also need somewhere um, in the borough where they can actually get in and out because obviously there's a lot of people, a lot of cars. So I think it's somewhere that I think they are at the moment, they're talking to planning and the LDF um, to keep things open. So I think we've got to support not only football and speedway, we've got to support all sport, every sport. There are coaches out there who work for nothing to um, teach children with cricket and they just do everything for nothing. You know, they go out there and teach kids that, and they put all their energies into keeping kids off the street and that's what we need. And I think sometimes as a chamber, it's nice to see us all off the same song sheet again. Um, I think we don't do enough for sport, dare I say, and I think we should do. But I think with Grey's Athletic, they do need to, f I remember where they were, and as Councillor Gledhill said, um, perhaps they didn't do enough when they owned that piece of land. Perhaps they could have done better um, to negotiate. Um, but I think we do need to listen to them, and hopefully they're being listened to now. Um, but we need to find, and the LDF needs to find somewhere for them to be in a safe place <coughs> where it doesn't interfere too much with people's homes. But I think we all, you know, I hope we're all singing off the same song sheet 
for sport it, as a whole. Thank you. Councillor Holloway? No, sorry, Councillor Chuckworth. Oh, thanks, Mayor. <laughs> I totally support this motion. And then um, I think Grace Athletics, they need, a pl they need a place they can call home. And I urge everyone to support it. Thank you. Councillor Duffin, I will say this is the only time I'm calling someone wearing a jumper in the chamber. Look at the way Councillor Chukru is dressed. I've, I've, I've got a shirt on underneath. <laughs> Uh, ju ju just on this motion, Councillor Kent is obviously someone I've seen at non-league games for years, back to before I was even a councillor. Um, and it, it's something that it's not just getting a piece of land that is something we need to achieve for Greys. It's having the facilities there to generate the income for the club to sustain, to have youth teams and everything around it. Because quite often it can be viewed as, hey, wherever it is just the land and that will do but it's quite often whether it's the attached bar and other revenue generating things that actually keep a football club running because you'd love to say there's enough people going through the door but someone that goes watches non-league football you get into the bleak time of winter and there's not many people turning up so it's needing that additional revenue to keep it going um so it's certainly something i support the ethos of where we want to go um i would say reading the monitoring's officer's comments there's not actually much this motion delivers other than the the idea that we do want to do this so there's still a long long way to go so i'd um ease caution but it's something that i would love to see done um we've got a fantastic facility with Averley, um and it would be great to see all four teams around the borough have top quality facilities that can have youth teams player development but as well benefiting the community with events being able to help there etc and councillor duffin councillor byrne yes Obviously, fully support this this motion. 100% support sport and Gray's athletics, but can also ask the chamber to support performing arts as well, because it's other. Some people don't like sport. So, Councillor, like can, can you not hold your papers? Because it oh, stops sorry, you, us sorry, from hearing sorry. you on the microphone. Did you not hear me? No. Do you want to repeat? I would say, I support the motion. I support sport. I support Gray's athletic, but also there is something else where people don't like sport, like performing arts. So. Everybody can they just not think sport, think other, there's other people in Thurrock that do other things. Thank you. Is there anyone else who wishes to contribute? No? Councillor Kent, would you like to sum up? I'm oh, sorry, Councillor Kerrin, would you, you reserve your right? Would you Thank like to speak? You. Thank you, Mr Mayor. And um, it's very encouraging to hear such wide support for um, Councillor Kent's motion. And as you all know, Councillor Kent has been a lifelong advocate and supporter of the cause of Grey's Athletic. And just hearing lots of different stories from people around the chamber shows how important this is. So um, firstly, the, the leader of the council is right that the local plan should be an opportunity um, not just for housing, but to talk about what kind of place we want Thurrock to be, um, what kind of activities we want available for people, that wider, broader picture of what a local plan should be. Um, obviously, uh, hearing Councillor uh, Gledhill talk about what the, the club used to be like on match days in the heart of Greys, in the heart of my ward, and he's absolutely right. There was um, a buzz on match days that, jet, that sort of spread out into the town, and even if you, you weren't a football fan, as Councillor Gledhill has um, openly said, you couldn't um, mistake it on a Saturday. Um, and hearing Councillor Chukru, who maybe should have declared an interest, but there's another Chukru who has played very well for Greys and um, been very successful for them, um, just, just shows how wide the club spreads into the community. Um, and the only reason they've survived 13 years of homelessness so far is because of uh, the, the supporters, because of the community work that they do that keeps them going. Uh, it's, and a wider conversation needs to be had about uh, cultural assets within the borough. So Councillor Byrne has rightly said about the arts, and Councillor Kent has identified on this motion also for, uh, Speedway in Thurrock. And as we go through the local plan process, let's look at how we can support all the different clubs and organisations that give people identity in Thurrock and give people pride in, in what's going on. And in the case of Gray's Athletic in particular, they've been going since 1890. 
and if we can use the local plan to put them on a help them on a surer footing, then there's no reason they can't carry on into the future. So thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Kent. Councillor Kent, would you like to sum up? I don't think there are any new points raised that I need to uh, address, which is what summing up's for. I will just thank everybody for their support and particularly thank those who uh, spoke about uh, Lakeside Hammers. Uh, Speedway, finding somewhere for that is equally as important as finding a new home for Grays Athletic. Thank you. Are all members in agreement? Anyone opposed? Anyone abstaining? Thank you very much. Uh, meeting concluded.